I'm Tyler Swick, an elementary music teacher in the Clark County School District. The perception of K-5 music education has been reduced to recorders and folk songs, but I'm here to show you it's so much more. I write original songs and lessons tailored to my students' interests, such as social-emotional learning and wanting to be a quesadilla when you grow up. At Robert and Sandy Ellis Elementary, all 950 students attend music class every week. 13% of those students choose to attend an extra choir or instrument club rehearsal after school every week. I love my school and surrounding community, but let's talk about how this all came to be. In college, I was convinced I would be a college professor, dealing with the smartest minds in the country and preparing them to take over the percussion game. The semester before student teaching, music education majors take a course titled Elementary Music. It started at 9 a.m. Can you believe that? By the end of the semester, I was in love with the idea of connecting students with music earlier in life. Providing music as a life skill to young people became my new mission. Well, after grad school. My love for steel pan was allowed to flourish while I was working towards my master's degree. After this exact performance, I was told it was time to visit Trinidad to compete in Panorama by the late Cliff Alexis, a legend in the pan community. Though I thought the purpose of this trip was to further my pan career, my pedagogy was impacted the most. I witnessed young people performing music at the highest level. Limits did not exist, and seemingly all citizens were in contention of being great musicians, not just those studying music. The experience broke down walls that American music education had helped me build. No matter what your job or focus was during the day, in the evening, in the pan yard, all were musicians. I was lucky to receive this knowledge during my first year of teaching because it set the trajectory for my classroom expectations. Whether you're a scholar, an athlete, lost or found, you're a musician in this room. My first job teaching was at a Title I turnaround zone, free and reduced lunch school that was replacing a lot of positions all at the same time. The new principal gave the students an incredible incentive. Students could attend extra music class during the school day if they turned in their assignments. At a school that struggled to get the community involved, music concerts became my chance to build an audience among the parents. Unlike Kevin Costner in the Field of Dreams, they did not come. An astonishing amount of students got themselves to and from the concert on their own or the sibling. It eventually become clear to me that the lunchroom is not the cultural epicenter of any community, especially this one. Success was found performing off campus. Success was found performing in locally owned restaurants where parents could bring their whole family for dinner while being entertained by their young musicians. Success was found in taking students to already existing community events and just participating. The peak of my time at that school was venturing over to the neighborhood community college and sharing the stage with the College of Southern Nevada Coyote Calypso Steel Band, the band that started my love for Pan in high school. A coworker filmed the finale on their cell phone and has become my most cherished memory of my time there. This video would also be pivotal to me being selected to open a new school in my district, an honor and a burden of creating new culture in a brand new community. But before construction of the building was even completed, I was facing a common problem among music teachers. Who's going to teach my class for a month when I take paternity leave? My final semester at my first school was put on pause so I could welcome my daughter into the world. Knowing that music subs are harder to find than your keys when you're running late, I knew I had to make a resource that ensured music education continued no matter who showed up to teach my class. I proceeded to make Orf xylophone lessons with an overhead camera view so students could mimic the video on their own instrument. Each day from home, I could see the viewership data letting me know that the videos were being shown. But something exciting started to happen. The videos were being used in other classrooms across the globe. By the end of the year, my sub xylophone videos had a thousand views. To think, not only did these videos let my students keep learning while I was gone, but potentially thousands of other students got to keep learning when their music teacher was absent. The thrill of creating useful resources sent me down the path of publishing my songs, lessons, and resources on YouTube. Little did I know this would put me ahead of the curve when the planet was sent into distance education two years later. I shared my lessons that could be done entirely on a Chromebook for students that didn't have instruments at home. I created YouTube instruments that could be played by pressing the number pad on your keyboard. For teachers looking to do more, I displayed my game plan for purchasing drumsticks, scarves, and egg shakers for every student in the school. All of my lessons involving these items were available on YouTube for other schools to utilize and for asynchronous students to access at any time. My daughter and my YouTube channel adventure are now four years old, amassing three million views as my recent Boomwhacker notation has gained popularity in the general music world. I joined the post-pandemic planning guide task force supported by Yamaha and Hal Leonard to send out a monthly monthly newsletter with obtainable goals, checklists, and positive affirmations as most of the music educators in the United States began planning their return to the classroom. My online efforts to break down the boundaries of the music classroom allowed me to be recognized by my district's Heart of Education Award and Yamaha's 40 Under 40 Music Educator inaugural list. Though my recent accomplishments are mostly online, getting back to teaching in person this year reminded me of the exhilaration I felt getting into my first classroom eight years ago. Bringing back concerts, performing in the community, and building relationships are the driving force behind my unwavering commitment to share music with young people.